Hi, today I'm going to walk you through the DDG Nutrient Testing Lab provided by Kansas Corn Stem. My name is Brent Connor and I am a lead teacher for the Kansas Corn Stem uh, program. Today I'm going to walk you through the DDG Nutrient Testing uh, Lab provided by Kansas Corn Stem. Uh, the purpose of this activity is to introduce uh, students to the process of ethanol production and uh, what that uh, produces and then uh, what is left over uh, during that process that the uh, uh, farmers can use, which is the uh, distiller's di dried grain uh, that provides nutrients to cattle feed um, and fertilizers uh, across the country. Um, materials you need, this is actually a two-part lab. Uh, we can, uh, you can teach this as a standalone lab, which means you have to have a day of prep work um, for that, or you could teach this as a follow-up to our uh, ethanol and distillation labs. Um, but we'll show you how to do both of those uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, video. Uh, so this video is going to be designed to do the day one, the prep lab, on how to get your uh, grains ready in order to do the nutrient testing. Um, so for this uh, lab, since this is going to be the standalone lab, we always introduce our students to uh, the topic. So um, most of the kids don't know what ethanol is, or they may have heard the word ethanol at the gas pumps. Um, so we go through and, uh, and talk about how uh, important uh, ethanol is um, for in the world for the demand of oil, the gasoline, uh, negative consequences of global warming due to gasoline production, and all of the, the issues regarding that have led to uh, the increased use of corn-based sugars uh, to produce ethanol, which is a, a cleaner version uh, of gasoline. Um, so... We asked our uh, kids to do a little uh, round table. So what is ethanol? Um, you know, so give them a few minutes to discuss what is it, what is it used for, how is it produced, and then give them an opportunity to share, um, share out their answers uh, with the rest of the class. And then we'll just go in and, and kind of, again, talk about um, the importance of it, what it is. So ethanol is an alcohol fuel distilled from plant materials such as corn and sugar. Uh, it's blended then with the gasoline to uh, uh, release fewer emissions into the environment, and it's con clean, uh, considered cleaner uh, in nature. Um, and unlike gasoline, pure ethanol is non-toxic and is biodegradable, which quickly, quickly breaks down, and so it becomes harmless if it's spilled, um, other than you know, the crude oil, which causes major uh, economic issues and environmental issues. So how do we get ethanol? Um, and that's the first uh, process that we're going to talk about today. Um, it is uh, created through the process of fermentation uh, where we take, uh, um, we break down the starches in the corn um, and into glucose and then we feed those uh, sugars to uh, uh, yeast uh, which starts that process of fermentation. Um, so uh, kind of go through uh, the process of getting started. We're not going to go into actual ethanol production at this point. Um, that's for the, the other lab. So fermentation is a metabolic process that consumes sugar in the absence of oxygen. Uh, yeast performs fermentation uh, by converting sugar into the alcohol. Um, and then, so the, the importance of that is uh, what is left after that ethanol is produced and we can pull that off um, into the distillation process, what's left over is what the, uh, the DDG, which is the distiller's dried grains and uh, for feed for livestock. So that's the whole purpose of this lab is to uh, test the nutrients in that to see if it's viable for that uh, livestock. Um, so for the standalone lab, um, there's several materials that you needed and these will be all provided to you through the Kansas uh, corn uh, stem program. Um, got to have some ground corn, uh, you get your buffer solution, you have enzymes, which is your amylase and glucohamylase, which plays a role in the fermentation process, breaking down the sugars uh, to get ready for that fermentation process. We have our uh, distiller's yeast um, and distilled water um, to get us started on that. So the first step is, oops, go the other way, um, is to uh, get our mash ready. So we have 100 grams of ground corn 
uh, in our bucket uh, or in our beaker there. And we're going to add 300 uh, milliliters of distilled water. And we'll give that a little stir. And then when this is stirred up, what we do is then we need to heat this up. So we have our uh, water bath. Um, we have a thousand milliliter beaker there with some water and it's been boiling for a little while. And we're gonna set this just right inside there to give that a little bath. And this is going to cook then for about 15 minutes um, or until we get a, like a thick oatmeal consistency on that. Um, so we actually have some that we have already heated. Um, so, uh, after you heat it, you want to get this cooled off. So after it sits in the, the bath, uh, we'll cool it down to about 55 degrees Celsius, between 35 to 55 degrees Celsius to make it sure it's not too hot for the yeast. Um, if you try to add the yeast in too early, then it's going to burn the yeast. So optimal temperatures, 35 to 55 degrees Celsius on there. Um, so what we need to add to this to get it ready for the fermentation, um, we have a beaker that we have uh, 100 milliliters of distilled water in, and we're going to put 10 milliliters of our amylase solution. So amylase is an enzyme, and it comes in a little powder uh, like that. Um, and this is, like I said, all provided uh, to you. Um, but this needs to be uh, um, activated, um, you know, uh, put into this water. So I use a big jug like this and the way you make this solution is you have, um, it is one gram of the uh, amylase enzyme per 100 milliliters of water. So um, put that in there and you shake that up um, uh, until we can activate that amylase. And so I have my 10 milliliters of amylase solution already prepared there. I'm gonna put that in there and then you wanna stir this, um, you know, five to 10 minutes uh, just to kind of get that nice and activated uh, inside there. Uh, once that is, uh, once your 10 minutes is done stirring there, you will take your buffer solution. Um, and the buffer solution is to make sure it's a pH of five. So we want to keep that a little bit of acidic um, solution uh, in there. So the pH buffer will make sure that we have a little bit of acid in there. Keep that solution nice and acidic so that the sugars will um, start getting broken down a little bit easier. Okay, so we're gonna just stir that around. And then what we do is now we add our glucoamylase, which is going to break down those sugars even farther. So again, this is our glucoamylase. Again, it comes in a powdered form and it's prepared just like the amylase, one gram uh, per 100 milliliters of water. And you give that a little shake and uh, we'll do 10 milliliters of that as well. So we're gonna just add that to that and give that a stir and once that's nice and stirred in and then what we're going to do is add our five grams of our yeast to that mixture and give that a nice little stir and get that nice and activated in there so what's happening inside this little bucket is or this beaker would be uh, that amylase is breaking down that uh, starch um, into some glucose uh, molecules and that glucoamylase is breaking that glucose into even smaller uh, sugars um, so that yeast is able to attack those sugars and and get those and so what I'm gonna do is once this is stirred up uh, we'll put a little uh, piece of plastic wrap over the top of that and uh, we'll let that sit overnight and we will check that in the morning hopefully that fermentation process has started so that is the uh, that concludes the day one of the DDG nutrient testing prep uh, day.